As we know, we don't have to get all that pay at all. We don't have to that, pay I understand. Pay. But we're giving some employees an extra four hours of holiday. Because the ones that are working 12 hours. If they have a regular work day of 12 hours, then they're, they're just getting their what they would normally get paid if they work that day. I don't see how they're getting that. Otherwise, they have to work another four hours in order to get their normal check. Or perhaps a vacation. Or a vacation. Now, what about the, the, the individual that is scheduled off? Got the new 
meeting, yeah. he gets 40 hours and that's it. There, there is no accumulation. There shouldn't be. Well, that's, that's great. great. Yeah. That it also says in here, it also says that not too many ways it used to be the anniversary, but it says the physical year.
Uh, ESDs were voted in uh, into existence and paid for by property owners who wanted enhanced services in their area for emergency providers. Uh, these voters and property owners are willing to pay for this higher level of uh, service uh, rather than just using donations and, and what's funding that Commissioner Court kind of throws their way from year to year. While in other parts of our county, taxpayers are satisfied with the level of emergency services that they are receiving or are unwilling to put forward the work to create ESDs and create an additional tax base so that they can have a higher level of service. Either way, it's unfair for you, the commissioners, to tax us as property owners, taking our money and, and serving it somewhere else in the county. Uh, we, we, we don't believe that's a fair way of doing business. Uh, if they are unwilling to have an ESD or create an ESD, or if they're satisfied with their level of service, then they, um, that means that they're getting enough money or from the money that you're throwing their direction now. Uh, and ultimately, you know, either don't distribute our tax money to any of the ESDs or the emergency services, uh, but don't pick and choose which ones get it. That's just not fair.
for all of these same lines. I want to say a couple of things. The people that belong to, or the people that, that, that inhabit the citizens of Wilson County, each and every one has been given the opportunity to join or form an ESP. Okay? Nobody can argue that. You either chose not to make the effort or by the vote, you chose not to be part of it. But guess what? ESD hasn't really got anything to do with this conversation. And that's a difference for Mr. Phillips. That's a difference for everybody's concerned. This is about county funds. Someone asked me this morning how I felt about this. I'm not going to use the exact word, but disappointed was probably in there somewhere. I pay the same rate as the judge does. I pay the same rate as this judge. Anybody else in here? I expect the same benefit from those dollars that I spend for my rate insurance as someone else in this county. If you look it up, socialism in the dictionary on the, on the computer, where do you want to look it up? It basically says you're going to take what I work for. And you're going to give to someone who chooses not to, not to work for it or is unable to work for it. Now, I can assure you, if someone in another fire service district, whether it be coal, stock, coal, wherever, called me and said, hey, my house is on fire, I need help. I'll grab a shovel and a dark nose and kind of on my way. But if you're not going to take the steps to protect yourself, don't ask me, don't in my Bill Fogel hand you money to buy a fire truck with. We stood up and did that. And that's over and above what our county taxes pay for. Okay? Don't ask me to take my money and throw it to someone who chooses not to participate. Can't, won't, unable to. A lot of different words can be used to it. But basically, we stood up. I expect everybody else to stand up. If you can't stand up, I'll give you a hand. If you're unable to stand up, I'll give you a hand. If you won't stand up, get on your own, folks. But do not ask me to provide welfare for people who will not. Now, I hate my, my business career. I've always hated for somebody to throw a problem on my desk and sit back here and walk off. I didn't come here this morning to do that. Now, do some of the people need help? Absolutely. Do the, do the funds need to be distributed fairly? I didn't say anything, I said fairly. There's a way to do that. It's based on the hazard fire in this case versus risk. Mr. Hanson, thank you. Okay, Carlos Felix. That's yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Thanks for everybody for giving me the opportunity to speak in front of the court. And um, here is my private citizen, this, excuse me, pink uniform, has come up from work to uh, share some thoughts on this. So first off, um, as a private citizen, I uh, helped her and some others with uh, trying to expand the uh, EMS service here in the county. And putting aside the fact that I'm not sure what the proposal is, so I'm kind of you know, trying to figure out what to talk about here since we don't know what as it be proposed, but had I known, and I'm sure a lot of other folks too, that the possibility even existed that even after we voted to increase taxes on ourselves above and beyond what the county provides to get a service that we all thought was going to be for us and whatever part of the ESC, you know, whatever falls in the ESC, if we would have known that the option even existed that that money wouldn't necessarily come to us, I wonder how that vote would have gotten or would have gone. Right, first off. And second, more and most importantly, like, uh, we have no idea what your proposal is going to be, sir, but if you're going to use the greater good argument, uh, what's the benefit to us as taxpayers? And I think of the school argument, right? So we all get taxed for the school district, but every one of us gets a benefit from that, and that if we choose to have children, they can be educated. And also, even if you don't have children, an educated populace is one that lessens crime, generally speaking, so that's the benefit to society. But in the end, everyone gets a benefit. So if our tax dollars for ESD were to be redistributed, what's the benefit to, let's see, myself in Laverne or anywhere else, 
even though I'm choosing to pay extra, what's going to be the benefit to me if my money, the actual money that I voted to pay, goes to somewhere else in the account? That's my basic question to what's in it for me for, since I'm paying for it. And that's uh, my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, Eddie Gallagher. Good morning. Thank you all. <clears throat> I've been an ESD commissioner uh, in District 3 for about 15 months. And among the things that I've learned in that time period is that, my goodness, EMS uh, has come so far. I visited last week with uh, another EMS agency that's really, really struggling. And we were just talking about EMS shop talk. And he was telling me about a call they had recently. And uh, they had to wait for a helicopter to come so they could perform a maneuver that really needed to be done on a patient because the helicopter carries equipment that they don't have. Well, our guys have it. We, we could have gone ahead and done it. And I've been impressed in my 15 months by some of the things that our medics with their supply of equipment and training and expertise have been able to do. It's, it's truly amazing. So we move on and last year about uh, November, we were asked, District 3 was asked to help uh, the Lavernia area. And as good neighbors and citizens of the county, we did. And we put a lot on the line. We sacrificed and we, we risked a whole lot to come over and, and double almost double our personnel costs and things and, and equipment. And we have the same level now in the Lavernia area as we originally had in the first part of the district. And then we were asked by, by a petition to come and come into the area. And you know, to give the citizens of the Lavernia area that opportunity, we had to foot the cost of an election. And, and we did. And as you know, it overwhelmingly passed and we're there. The situation we are in, in particular, is that we're providing the service now, and it'll be October of 2019 before we see a penny of tax dollars from the area that we're already providing service to. We know that we have a, an extremely uh, tight budget, a, a tough responsibility to make it through another 12 months on what we're going to be able to generate just off of the calls that we make. The money that we had anticipated coming from both the Lavernia area and the usual contribution that we've had in the past, we really do need. Thank you. Uh, Chris Skaggs. I'm president of ESD3, and I'm not going to repeat everything Eddie said because that's where we're at. I've been making phone calls, I just want to reassure Skip and the people in the room. It's no longer us and them, it's just us. You cut the funding off, you do what you need to do as a commissioner. I want those people to know whatever we need to do, we're going to get it, and they're going to get service. We stepped in before we ever got a guy because they needed service. They're going to receive that service one way or another, whatever we got to do to sacrifice to get it. And I just want to reassure Skip and them we're going to do that. Scott Malone. Uh, yes, my name is Scott Malone. I'm a private citizen in the Burning area. Uh, I'm pretty disappointed that you have not told us the uh, reason why you're making this uh, choice. Uh, give us something to respond to. But right now, based on what little information we've got, that I work hard on with the others to get ESD3, ESD1 into our area to improve our service. We chose to pay extra for that improved service. Now it appears that we are choosing because we have stepped up to take care of ourselves or help take care of ourselves to penalize us for doing the right thing. You are now taking our money and giving it to someone else who is choosing not to do the right thing. If you will do, as commissioner responsible, you approach the whole community and tell them you need a kind of wine and mess. You need maybe a kind of wine and fire. Choose to take care of yourself, take the burden off the county. Now, if you don't take that money and give it back to me in a tax refund, I thank you. I have to have something to do with it. But if you're just going to give it away to somebody else who is choosing not to take care of themselves, I'm extremely disappointed. Thank you. 
George Jones. Thank you, Judge. My name is George Jones. I'm former president of ESD number one, currently the vice president, and uh, I think that I've been the longest serving ESD commissioner in Wilson County. I'm now working on my 10th year as a volunteer in this position. I've also had the opportunity to take a look at how our services have grown dramatically over that period of time. The level of service is incredible now. With District 3, what we've done in District 1, but I'm going to echo everything they said. I stand in opposition to this proposition entirely. It is not fair to tax in one area and redistribute in another area just because certain people stood up and decided that they would pay extra for a higher level of care, particularly when it involves medical care. Okay? But I'm not going to sit here and re-echo everything that these guys have said. I'm going to give you a couple of op uh, options in this matter. Because there are other counties that have chosen to get out of the fire and EMS game and not fund those organizations at all. But I would say you can either take an all or nothing approach. Either you fund all of them or you fund none of them. If you choose to fund none of them, I would say please redirect those funds in a direction that would help all of these organizations. Okay? We have an aging set of infrastructure in our communication system within the county. We've got software in that main console that's 10 years old. Anybody who knows anything about software knows that puts it in the dinosaur category. And they need help over there. And we need help because we can't even hear our dispatchers whenever we're in the grocery store. They need help over there from dispatchers. So if you take the money away, please give it to the Sheriff's Office and for the communications purpose. Another option is, if you're going to pull the money, don't pull the rug out from underneath these people. Give them an opportunity to adjust their budgets so that they can find other sources of income to offset what you're going to take away. In other words, let them give time, give them time to find grant money, give them time to maybe get private donations or to create an investment. Any of those would be a fairer option than just taking it away. A third option that you have is to come through and revamp the system that you're using today to allocate those funds. Okay? Today, it's just kind of a dark board approach as to where and how much each one of these fire departments gets. You might look at something that includes a formula for the number of square miles, as well as how many runs they make, and in here, along with that, you can add something to the effect of uh, a number of dwellings on the property. So obviously the areas that are heavily populated would get more than those that are in a rural area. But it would still at least be a fair distribution of the funds. Okay? And fourth of all, I would say before you defund anybody, you need to take a very close look at the line items in your budget for these fire departments. There is in here, you know, a line item for one fire department that is not a recognized entity by the state of Texas. It does not have a business license. If it does not have a business license, then it cannot have a tax ID number. If it does not have a tax ID number, then it cannot be a 501c nonprofit organization. So basically, it's an illicit organization that you're currently funding. I would say before you fund that organization again, you take a little bit of a closer look at how it's structured. Because to take from the legitimate organization, and then give to an illicit organization, you can never make a business case for that. Never, never. Thank you, John. Thank you. Okay, this is the public comments. Thank you, Thomas. Hey, Thomas. You still have one of your questions. I don't know if you got the idea that I was going to think about the funds that we had. We both were taken away from you give it to somebody else. That's not my intention to give it to nobody. My intention is to give back to the, like that man said back there, to the taxpayers, put it back in the general fund. That's the intention of what's done. If, what uh, the other one was saying, y'all have sales tax, right? I'm oh, sorry, sir. This one, uh, the year two, number two has sales tax. Y'all collect sales tax. How long have y'all collect sales tax before? That passed in 2000, uh, 2002, I think we started. None of them are the ESG number one either? No. I don't? Okay. 
Okay, that's the only reason I was going to give the money back. Because I was 